Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Simsei Chanel and today I am going to be doing a beginner's guide to house building. In this video, it is not going to be a speed build. In fact, I am going to be building this house real time with you guys and basically showing you the in and outs of building the things that I do. Now, the reason I say this is a beginner's guide is, is because it is, sorry, because it is from a beginner to a beginner. I am in no way or form one of these builders that builds like these super amazing builds, but I do wanna show you the concepts that I go ahead and do whenever I am building a house. So for starters, first thing I do is try to think up of a design. Now, usually sometimes we are going for inspiration on Pinterest, but I like to go off the top of my head. So I always think about what I want the front of the house to be. So for starters, if you're looking for building a house, try not to do this. A lot of builders I see tend to do like one big square, put a roof on it, and then that's it. If you're going to do that, here's an easier way of doing it. So you're going to make a square here you can make a big square here and then you can make a smaller square right here. Then on the side here, you can have one square and then maybe even on the back angle of this, you can have another square right there. Now I am going to show you then how we go, how do we go about separating this building? Now, before we think about separating the building, I always want to check to make sure that the roof works out how I want it to. In order to get that together, I try to work with the different types of roofs that we have in the game. Now I like to use this gabled roof, but I turn it around if I'm going to be using it as a bigger section on a bigger section or a wider section, I like to use the gabled roof and always know that you can adjust the roof then I like to go in with this same gabled roof but this time I turn it around and I pull it back some and it goes here and to adjust you just pull it down and pull it back so that it interlaps with the other with the back of the other building here for the sides for this side here, I can either go with a half gabled roof, which is pretty much like my favorite one to use for like buildings that have sides coming out like that. And then just pull the sides in so that they're not inter out, you know, lapping through the roof. So you can have a roof like this. Or if you are feeling like you like the gabled look, you can go ahead with a gabled roof, put that same gabled roof and just put it in the side here and then lower it so that it is lower than all of the others. So then you will have this kind of look right here. And then for the back, I go in with another gabled roof and I put it, I pull it back. So it interlaps with this main roof on the front here. Now you don't like this lapping over the sides here. So you just want to go ahead and pull it up. But in the event that you're going to be pulling it up, you might want to do that for the rest of the house, unless you're looking to have some sort of an overhang. I like to have an overhang on the front part of the house, but for every other part, I tend to just stick with the you know with pulling it in and just keeping it at a little bit of an angle now there are roof decorations that you can use to give your house a little bit of dimension so you can go ahead and use it certain little things like these i try not to mess with these unless i am doing like a bigger build but of course if you're looking for like a cute little chimney to go on top of your house then you can go ahead and just grab one of these bad boys and kind of just stick it on either the front or the back portion of the house, I think of like going somewhere. Yeah, this just jacked up. But um, if you're looking for those types of decorations, then you can go ahead and do that. Going in then, I start thinking about what I'm going to do with the house. So this could either be a small entry 
to the house. So because of the fact that it's a little off centered, then I try to kind of make it as, you know, equal as I possibly can make it. And then don't forget that you have to adjust the roof as well. So I go in and I kind of just pull the roof in and that makes it a little bit cuter. So this could be like your entryway into the house. So from the entryway into the house, then you want to go ahead and kind of delete this wall over here so that you have a section there now you're going to be centrally wanting to locate your door so you you kind of don't want to have anything looking too off balance i notice a lot of people like to make these houses where their rooms look a little awkward you know so this would be your bedroom you could even have like a small portion back here, which could be a bathroom. So usually for me, what I would do, or even what you could do, is add a smaller section piece right here that adjoins to a bathroom. So this could be one bedroom right here, or even the kitchen. You could have the living room here, the kitchen here kitchen slash dining there's a bathroom and then here is the bedroom so if you want you can go ahead and extend this just a little bit and then you can go ahead and extend this one out just a little bit as well and then remember that you always have to adjust your roof to match what you have going on for the back portion of this because of the fact that it has this um let's see what kind of roof goes particularly well with this now i could go with this half gabled roof and kind of just turn it to the side here and then just kind of bring this in here like this and then bring it down so that it doesn't look too much like it's like causing too much issues with the rest of the house um i'm not really like a perfectionist when it comes to the roofing of certain houses so let's just get rid of the roof and we're gonna do this quite differently we're going to take the gabled roof, but instead of the direction that we had it in before, we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn it this way. Then we're going to take that same gabled roof and we're going to turn it sideways. We're going to pull it back. We're going to bring it across like this. Pull up the corners like so. Drag it down like this. And then for the front here, we're going to go with that same gabled roof again. Very same one. And we're going to turn it to the right. And then we're going to go ahead and just pull down on the top just to not make it be so peaked and angled if your roofs as you pull them down it means you're gonna have to pull down the others to match it up as well with the back room here because of the fact that this is a whole entire back room i'd go in and basically what i do is i could keep it that way and just kind of attach another piece of a gabled roof to it another gabled roof to it and just kind of drag it across like so and then kind of bring it down so that it as you can see it now connects and makes one roof and there we have it when you click off of it it looks like it's just one roof but it's actually just two roofs right there then because of the fact that this is a medium wall and i'm looking for something that's shorter i go ahead and i click the shorter version of the roof and there we have it so let's look at the exteriors now a lot of people like to overdo it with the windows i myself was very much an overdoer of the windows I like i really loved having lots and lots and lots of windows i really love using cc doors because i feel like they really add to the house and i like using doors that also give me the opportunity to have windows next to them so for instance i use those doors right there and then i will go in with some windows that add a little bit more flair and stuff so we have these windows here that not only you know match the doors but they actually fit in well now we can go in and drop two more windows in so i can go ahead and add these windows next to each other we'll put one here and we'll put the other one right across from it. And then on the back side here of the house, you want to do at least two sets or maybe even just one set. Just kind of line them up properly so that they're even and the space between the windows are even. We'll put a single window on this one right here. I'll put double windows right about here. So there's a double window there. And then on the back for the bedroom, I'll do the same with the wider windows 
I'm also holding down Alt because it makes it easy to place the windows without them snapping to the grid. And then for this side here, I just add maybe two more windows. I like having very light and airy rooms. So I'll go ahead and just drag two more windows there. And at towards close towards the end of the house, then I add my other set of windows. And then that is it for the amount of windows that are on the house. We could drop one here for dramatic effect, um, you know, just to kind of give it a little bit of that kind of feng shui, you know, make it look nice. So we're going to add the other set of windows right there. And as you can see, the top part of this house does look like it is missing like a window or something. So what you could do is we have these Grant Park windows here. We could add two of them on the top here to kind of even things out, make it look a little different. Looks kind of weird, but that's what it is. The next thing that I do is I go in for a wallpaper and here's how I do the wallpaper. So let's say we're going to give this house a nice white texture for here. What I would do is I would put the white here and then try to contrast the build with a little bit of brick. The reason I say contrast the build with some brick is because having just an all white house, you don't really see it. If you're looking for something that is like a house like you find in the suburbs or something like that, then you want to get a brick to kind of contrast it. So I usually just go for a brick. So something that doesn't have trim or if you're going to use trim, try to use something like this. But I feel like it would look better without the trim. So let's go with something like i don't know not that i think try to go for what makes your eyes what like plays nicely on your eyes do you think it would look good with a little bit of stone or something i'm gonna go with the stone here and we just add the stone here and add the stone on this extended area right here everything else should be white so we're gonna go ahead we're going to add the white here on this roof here on the back portion here this here and on this right here and this area that is here is just gonna have the brick to kind of just play it off and make it look nice and simple now you can give the house some corners edges to make it look more three-dimensional i like to go ahead and use this particular um, pillar here called the experience pillar it it comes with get together and it is perfect because you can literally use it as a border on your house and i very much love doing that i'll try not to use it on the corners where this paint actually does have like a little bit of um a little bit of corner to it but for the areas of the house where it doesn't have any cornering i try as much as possible to utilize this right here so we're going to go ahead we're going to copy this and we're going to drop it right here as well and it adds a little bit of a three-dimensional effect to the house so as you can see this corner didn't have one so i went ahead and put that there and um this corner here as well doesn't have one so we're gonna go ahead grab this and we're gonna put it here we could even go as far as changing the wallpaper of the house just so that we're able to now use this so let's say maybe we want to make the house blue so we'll go ahead we'll grab this blue paint right here i'll go ahead and throw this on the roof that way it will be easy for me to go ahead and utilize the other pieces of the pillar here so we're using the experience pillar i'm just going to hold shift so that i'm able to have multiples because it doesn't automatically give you multiples and from here i just go ahead and i place these pillars around the corners of the house to give it a little bit of dimension another thing that i like doing is because this house doesn't really have a porch um I kind of like to add a lot of this trim. Now, usually I tend not to go for this one because I feel like it looks rather clumsy. So my favorite is the angled out trim or I go for the stepped roof. So the stepped roof though, when you put it on, it kind of doesn't look like it makes any much of a difference. Or you can use the square roof trim, which is smaller. Square roof trim is absolutely beautiful. It adds that you know that nice little dimension that you're looking for on your house and then the time comes when we have to decide what covering we want to put on our roof 
for the sake of keeping everything nice and tidy, I'm going to go ahead with this snowy type roofing here and we're going to just do this pattern on the roof. Or we can go with this keeping it wavy and we can do this. It all depends on which one you think is nice. I like to use this one by um I like to use this one by Felix Sander and um Harry Sims or I go in and I use this one by Lena Cherie. Lena Cherie makes this gorgeous one that is a nice brown and actually just adds so much tone to the rest of the house. Let's not forget that there's another piece of the roof back here that actually needs a little bit of trim. So with that, we have this right here. Now for exterior. For exterior, I tend to try a little thing with terrain tools. I'm not the best at terrain tools. So there is one called Scratchy in Patches. I like to use this one to kind of make it look like the area is a little bit worn. And I just kind of go around the edge of the building, you know, because obviously it must rain at some point. And then around the edge of the building would get a little bit of worn from, you know, the rain falling and just falling off the side of the building and causing it to just you know have that effect so i go ahead and i spray around the edge of the building to not make it look so obvious that the building was just built on here like you want it to look like the building has been here for some time so like i said i'm not the best with the terrain paints i'm not an artist and i feel like artists people with artistic skills just know how to use the terrain paints and make them look nice so i tend to just grab this one and i just kind of or you can use loose dirt that other texture and i go around the perimeter of the house now i'll show you why i'm doing this it looks weird right now and you're probably like oh my god what the hell is that so the next thing that i do is i go in and i try to get some shrub grass bush flowers you name it and i put it in like little areas of the house that is just going to give the house a little bit of a pop and make it unique i also like using this bush in front of houses because i feel it's so gorgeous so I'll use it like right here and I use it right there. Uh, and then in between where there's these bushes, I tend to just add like these little bits and pieces of flowers just to add a little bit more dimension. Um, there's this green fern. I'm going to just pop this here in the corner. Yeah, We're going to pop it here on this corner as well of the house, maybe over here in the corner. I like using the fern on like in corners because it adds this, I don't know, it adds this kind of look that I really am in love with. So I like to add the fern into the corners of the buildings. I also very much like using this grass here to make it look like certain areas of the yard, it's a little bit overgrown or the weed whacker that the person is using to cut their yard just didn't get those little areas of the yard. So I try as much as possible to just keep it like that. And uh, the next thing that I like using is flowers and stones to give your house that kind of dimension so we're gonna go in with a little bit of stones like overtake or over sweep everything so for instance i like to look at the surrounding areas and try to see what tree goes perfectly in this area as you can see it's used to utilizing some strange trees that i don't really have here so i'm going to try to see what tree i can try and best squeeze in here i don't like that one and this one is, this one kind of comes close, but it's really just kind of distracting from what we've got going on in the yard here. So I am going to grab this particular tree from Cats and Dogs. I didn't even know that they had different colors on this tree. This is amazing. I had no clue. But I go ahead and I drop this tree in the corner right there or even right here. And then on the back end of the house, I also like to add one other tree. So I'm going to add this breadfruit tree. But as you can see, the way this breadfruit tree is just standing there, it just seems a little bit off. So what I like to do is I like to go in with doing the same thing. 
grab a couple of shrubs and drop them underneath the tree so it looks like the tree isn't just placed there it actually you know has something going on i like to shrink down one of these plants here to give it a little bit more of a a vibe going on so i'll grab a couple of bush and i'll put them there and then i go back in with the terrain paint same one and give it some shading underneath of it because obviously it's a breadfruit tree and there's been people walking walking underneath of this tree so i give it a little bit of shading in the back there and then there we have it now because of the fact that this house doesn't have a porch i try to give it a little bit of a walkway we're going to go back in with the terrain paints and i like to use this one these are by lena sheree these are absolutely breathtakingly perfect. And then I just go in and adjust the size of it. So we're going to use this one right here and give it this. Or you can test out which other ones that you think are nicer. I think this one is a little bit nicer, adds a little bit more of a nice little stone path. I really hate that this does not line up with the street here. It really is annoying, but this is the best that we can do. So for right here, I do this. Then... I like to go ahead and I like to put outdoor lighting on the house. So I'll go around here and I usually try to like incorporate these cute little candles around the yard to kind of give it that light that it needs. So around the front portion of the house, I will just put like a few little of these candles to make it look really nice to show that there is some light. And then in the nighttime, you can see this soft little glow that it gives off nothing too serious but it gives off this nice little glow and you can tuck you don't even have to have them out in the open you can kind of tuck them behind rocks and stuff i like to put the little candles just out peeking out so you can kind of see them and it kind of just gives off this nice little light that you're seeing here and then i put one just right here in this bush here so you get the light but you're not really seeing it too much for the house now i tend to go in with a nice light on the house especially in the back areas of the house where i feel like it desperately needs some light so we can go in we can have one i like to tuck these ones in like underneath the roof underneath the eaves of the roof actually and it gives off this really nice protective type of light so we kind of just tuck it deep underneath the eaves so you don't even recognize that it's there and it kind of gives off this I am an authority type, I am a light, and I'm going to shine down on this house. I'll tuck it like right underneath of the eave of the house. So it gives off this light outside of the house. Reason I do this is because we do we have these lights back at home, uh, and it's a great way of protecting your home from burglars and stuff like that. So I kind of just incorporate it around the house. And it gives off this really nice light in the nighttime. And for the little edge corners of the house, I go in with this same light, but try to get it tucked in as much as you can underneath of the awning. So I'll tuck that one in right there. And then for this, I'll just go ahead and tuck this one in here as well. So we have these lights that are on the house and now the house just looks absolutely amazing. The next thing you do is you wanna go in and you wanna get yourself a nice little mailbox. So we have this mailbox right here that actually very much suits this house. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this just for a teensy bit, maybe move it over a little bit. And then I grab the mailbox and I put it right here. I kind of just want this to be you know maybe off to the side of it so I'll put these flowers out on the forefront and then kind of put this in a corner here so it's all about rearranging and making sure that you get the right thing so we have this mailbox that is right here I could have opted for one of these normal ones but I really do like this one right here I feel like it really goes well with the house and then for a trash bin if I have a tree in the front of the yard, then I tend to kind of just put the trash bin right next to it to kind of, you know, give a little distance to walk over there towards the tree. Now, the house is complete on the outside. As you can see, the outside of the house is done. It is absolutely beautiful. It is gorgeous. 
and I can go ahead and upload the shell if you guys want. Inside, I want to give you an idea of how I would organize the house. So as you can see here, we have this right here. Some of these plants need to be moved just a little bit because they're sticking through and it's kind of irking me a bit. So we're just gonna bring them out. Uh, this plant right here just needs to go out just a little bit. And there is, that's perfect. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to decorate the inside. I'm not gonna really like go through decorating the house, but I did just wanna show you guys how I do the house. And I am gonna show you where I would put the certain rooms that I need. So for lights, I like to go ahead with the Hidden Light by Ravishy, and I feel like this one really does do a great job of lighting up the area. So we're gonna do one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. For some reason, this room just doesn't have any flooring, which is quite weird. We're gonna go ahead and grab some concrete and just gonna throw some concrete inside here because this house, this room doesn't have. So there we go. Now for starters, let's jump into it. We have the entry of the house and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a nice archway so that your sims have an arch to walk through to get to this room now you can go with a double arch or you can go with a singular arch i try to not use those base game ones i don't know why they just don't suit what i'm going for and these ones are a little bit too wide so i try to go for double entry ones and line it up with the door I think this is lined up with the door. So this is the entry. You can have like some benches out here, coat rack hangers and stuff like that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put down wood. Now, like I said, I decorate the houses based on the families that are in them. The family that is in this house, they like light rooms. They like for their the house to be light and airy. It's basically just going to be a single mom she really is trying her best with her child and she's trying to keep up with appearances and even though it may seem like a little bit hard she really is struggling but she is trying her best to make things work so for the bedroom the mom she will be someone that really loves pink she loves fashion and so i will go in with this nice pink here or i could even do this sun faded pink here i think this one is absolutely gorgeous and then i will go in with a bathroom i will do this nice pink tile on the bathroom here for the kitchen i tend to go with a normal a normal paint on the kitchen walls so we're going to go with this nice green here for living rooms and hallways i tend to do a cream because i don't know i think that's how it is here in london now this living room is absolutely massive but i made it massive because the mom shares her bedroom with her toddler and it gives her an opportunity to have a lot more things in the house eventually so I go in, I grab my doors. There is a door to the bathroom. There is a door to the bedroom. And for the kitchen, I tend to just use an archway. I don't know why. I tend to like seeing things open. So basically you come in here. This is gonna be the entry area. This is the living room area. We have the bedroom, we have the kitchen, and we have the bathroom. And if at any point you feel like you need to extend certain areas of the house, it is very easy to go ahead and do that. You just drag your walls as you see fit. So this is a single parent's home. And if at any time you feel like you need to add an extra room on, it will be very much easy. You can also build upwards on the house. How would you get upstairs? How would I get upstairs? So it's always easy to add stairs to your house. My preferred method of doing this is just going ahead and trying to tuck your stairs into a corner. So I like to go ahead and just move them into a corner like about here. Then I try to extend the stair to just kind of get this little bit of a curve towards it. And as you can see, here we are on the upstairs section of the house. Now, how would I go about separating the upstairs of the house, you ask? So I would go ahead, I would do a slim hallway. There would be a room here. There would be a room here. There would be a bathroom here. There would then be a room right about here. 
and I'd probably put a room here. So this would be a room, this would be a room, this would be a bathroom, this would be a room, and this would be a room. Or, for starters, I could then extend on this room and make it a little bit smaller, make this room just a little bit longer, and then we could have master bedroom with bath, master bath, and this could be a shared bedroom between the two other rooms that are up here. So this would make things a whole lot perfect. Or instead of this going that way, I could then just make this one room. This could be a bathroom. This could be a small nursery. So this could be like a bedroom here, a bedroom here, a bathroom here, master bedroom, master bathroom. And then I'd just go ahead and I'd put my doors in how I see fit. So there would be a door here. There would be a door there. There would be one door here, there would be a door here, and there would be a door right here. Then I'd go in, I'd grab this same sourced timber, or we can go ahead and use carpet. I like to have a little bit of carpet in the house. I'll go ahead and I'll use this nice cream carpet here. These ones are by uh, Peacemaker, but recolored by Lena Cherie. And then we go ahead and we just drop some carpet around the house. I'll go ahead and grab the... Um, tile that I used in the bathroom or we can use different ones I like to use this one sometimes as well so we just grab this one tile here and this other tile here and then we go downstairs grab those same hidden lights by Ravishin no I keep clicking the wrong thing hidden ceiling light and we just go ahead and we just drop this hidden ceiling light in all of the little areas that are not well lit so there we go we have this like that and then you're wondering Aren't you gonna block off this section? Why, absolutely yes. Instead of using railings, I like to use half walls. Half walls are perfect for me personally. I really do like the way they look. So I always go ahead and use half walls here. And you can make a perfect little half wall right here. Then I just go in and I just grab the paints from the hallway here and I put the hallway paint here and then for each of these rooms because each of these rooms would have sims that have different personalities I'd go ahead and I'd throw down some paint for them so we'll do some blue paint over here probably do a little bit of gray paint inside of here I like this gray actually I think that gray is absolutely absolutely breathtaking so I'd use this orange right here and I'll probably do a little bit of a you know I'll do this color right here and then for the bathroom we go in with a little bit of tile we can do this blue and orange right here and for the walls on the half wall we do this got to make sure you get the inside and the outside because sometimes the outside is done and then the inside is not and then for the half wall I like to change up the trim just to give it a little bit of color so we're going to go ahead and just change the trim on this half wall to be white and there we have it then for the stairs you know we need to have these little rails so that your sims can hold on when they're going up and down the stairs then I kind of like to go in with these ones from seasons so I like to go with this one. It really does add so much beautiful flavor to the stairs. And there you have it. So that is how I would go about making the second floor onto this house. If you think that you don't want a second floor, you can go ahead and add back and just remove the top floor and just add the roofs as I would have showed you guys. But this, my darlings, is how you would make yourself a nice little house. And it looks a lot better being a double house, being a double store house so this is how I as a beginner go about making a house on the Sims 4 I try not to make it look too square as possible but make it as cute as I possibly can all right guys so this is the completed house if you guys would like to download this house it will be on the gallery at Simsational. I will leave my tag in the description of the video down below let me know what you guys think if you would like to see a furnished edition of this house without any cc's please let me know in the comment section down below and i will see you guys next time bye guys